I Am Refocused Radio is brought to you by Documation, service that serves. Technology solutions to keep you moving forward. Visit nation.com today. You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocus Radio. We are here once again, and this time we're going to be talking to Marcy Henna. She grew up with, upon her family in the 1800s area in Texas Hill Country, ranch near Austin, and she had a novel when we last spoke. And this is a big situation because it hit the big screen. So before we get too deep into the details, first off, I want to thank Miss Marcy Henna for being on the show today and say, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, and thank you for having me. Let's tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I grew up, um, in, well, I was born in Austin. We, we lived in all sorts of places in the world due to my dad's work. In fact, I lived in, in Kenya, Africa, in the 60s. And, but most of my life was spent in Texas and, and, and much of it on the family ranch that's, that you mentioned earlier that's been in the family since the 1800s in the Hill Country. And this novel that, you, that this motion film is inspired by when we last spoke, Tell us about that novel and what inspired you to write that. Well, in growing up in the ranch, my grandparents lived about a mile down the road, and we saw them just about every day. And my grandfather was a great storyteller. He loved to have an audience, and, and I, I loved to listen to him. So he would go into the family living room after lunch, and he would lean back in this old office chair that's on wheels. I was always afraid that he was going to take a spill and you know hurt himself and be on the floor, but he never did. And he would talk and, and tell me stories about our family, um, like from 100 years ago, that had been passed down orally from generation to gener- generation. And I found that very interesting. And we had such a, a great uh, life out on the ranch. You know, just it was all about family and reading lots of books and talking a, a whole lot. And, you know, just life on the ranch, you know, taking care of cattle. And my grandmother had a blue ribbon garden. And after my grandparents passed, I wanted to preserve their memories in a way that wouldn't wouldn't pass away with them. I wanted to preserve the way they spoke, the colloquialisms that they used. Um, I wanted to talk about ranch life, then the way that I knew it as they were as they were leading it, you know, or as they were ranching. And so that's pretty much my background because the ranch is the background for for the book and for the movie. But the story itself about the two little girls. Um, is, is complete fiction, just to let you know. But there are small moments from my life that are actually, actually very real in, in the story, in the book, and in the movie. For book authors out there who will be inspired by this, the burning question for a lot of them will be, what was the process like turning this novel into a film? I always saw, and the entire time I was writing uh, the novel, I saw it as a film. It just kind of came to me that way, and I was I had always had kind of a heart to make family entertainment for families that could be viewed from, say, ages 5 through 95 and beyond. And so what happened was right before I started, uh, right before my book was published, I was on Facebook one day, and I saw a book trailer, and I never even heard of a book trailer before. So I decided just within five minutes that I was going to do that, that I just felt very driven, very drawn to do that. So within a month, I hired a film team. We filmed out on the family ranch and in the communities of Blanco and Johnson City. I know you're familiar with those. And um, then after the film had been edited, I I floated it out through Facebook, and it caught the the attention of producer Fred Miller and his wife, Kathy Miller. And then they they read the book, and the rest is history. Here we are. (laughs) And with the cast that you have is very impressive. You have rising star Darby Camp, but you have Melissa Gilbert, Cloris Leachman as well. Right. What was the process like finding the right people for the film? Some of the cast, I know Darby um, Camp and her mother's in the movie as well. They play young Juliet and adult Juliet because we have the periods of 1967 and 1987. So it's really neat to have had a mother-daughter team. And they're from Charlotte, North Carolina. And so is Chandler Head. She, um, Chandler has a big film history, uh, a lot of credits to her name as well. Um, she's been in The Glass Castle, Fosse Vernon, The Right Stuff, and of course Darby has been in Big Little Lies and Clifford 
and the Christmas Chronicles. These girls have big resumes to be so young. And then Melissa Gilbert, well, that was a natural. I mean, who didn't love Little House in Prairie? Who doesn't remember Melissa Gilbert? <laughs> I grew up with that, that series. And then Corbin, this is a very different role for Corbin to play because he usually plays tough guys like in L.A. Law or, or you know, some of the many other shows that he's been on. But, so the character of Walt that he plays, and he plays the grandfather in the story, is a very gentle guy, a very loving person who is sort of a Santa Claus for the family. What were one or a few favorite scenes that you have in this film? I've got quite a few, but one of them is, and this, this one moved me to tears the day we were filming because it was so beautiful, it was so moving. So Cloris Leachman plays an eccentric great-grandmother who is kind of dumped off on the family. The, the little girls have also been dropped off. Their dad has gone to Vietnam, and their mom decides she wants to go back to Broadway, and she doesn't want to be a mom. And she just lays on the front porch. And just as the grandparents are getting their feet under them and getting adjusted to, to being full-time parents again, well, Walt's mother, played by Cloris Leachman, is dropped off in their house, and she's quite a character. She dresses like Emily Dickinson. She quotes... Emily Dickinson, uh, and she's 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 difficult. She she gives them a hard time, and she's not happy about the circumstances of her life. She's just she just is, you know, um, she's both funny, very funny, and very difficult. So toward the latter part of the movie, the relationships have all kind of been healed, and they're starting to see the good in their great grandmother, and starting to love her as a person. And so there's this beautiful moment when Cloris is reliving her youth. She was a a very well-known ballerina um, when she was young, and she's wanting to teach the girls ballet, but she can no longer really dance the way she could then. So she's moved around the house, and it's not a wheelchair. It's like an office chair. And the girls are... She's teaching them ballet with her arms, and they're twirling her around in the chair, and this beautiful, beautiful music by Locke May. It's called the Flowers Duet, I believe. It's playing in the background, and it is so moving to see the generations to come together, all, all dancing and celebration of, of their lives. And that's it's truly a magical moment. And once again, we are listening to I Am Refocus Radio, talking to Marcy Henna, talking about the amazing movie, When We Last Spoke. This is coming out soon. October is the month. 27th and 29th, is that right? Yes, October 27th and 29th. It's going to be shown in AMC, Regal, and Cinemark Theaters. If you want more information about the film, you can go to whenwelastspokemovie.com. And they're also on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow them on Twitter and Instagram. But back to Marcy, when when you are seeing in today's world, today's world that we live in right now, where a lot of people are going to be having a lot more time than they normally would have to go watch a right. good movie. What is something that you will hope that the viewers will take away after the film? Well, I hope that they're going to take away the idea or come back with the idea that love really does heal just about everything. And that, you know, everyone's gone through hard times in their lives. No, no one escapes that. And I think that some healing will go on, go with them. But I also think that they're going to have had a really good time. They're going to be laughing. They're going to be crying and hopefully cheering by the time it's through. I think they're going to come out feeling way better (laughs) about 2020 than what they felt before they went in. And when it comes to family and friendship, this film gives people a, a light at the end of the tunnel. Right. So for every situation that someone may be going through, right. What would you say for them when they can prepare themselves for this film and what they can expect as far as inspiration for that light at the end of the tunnel. I think they, you know, I mean, everybody will carry their own, their own past with them in there. I think they might have, you know, similar incidences where maybe they didn't get raised by their parents. You know, a lot of folks get raised by grandparents or aunts and uncles and or friends even. And, and some are adopted. So not every family looks like they are all related to one another, and not every family needs to look like or, or that they just stepped out of a catalog, you know. But they are families, and they are to be celebrated, and they are to feel good about um, their their role in, in their families and to feel 
um, some, some sense of, of, of joy. And another thing I want them to take away is that no matter how difficult life is, we need to find joy in the moment. And so one of our themes in our movie is dance where you are. Now, that's a metaphor to dance wherever you are or what in whatever situation you find yourself. Because if you wait until life is perfect before you find joy in it, before you dance in the moment, before you take uh, any sweet moment that you can and celebrate it, then you're going to be waiting a very long time. So just celebrate Celebrate your journey no matter where you are in it. Once again, we're talking to Marcy Hanna. She is the one behind this amazing project from the book to the film. And this is exclusively on Army Focus Radio. We have the pleasure of having you on today to not just talk about this, but also the story behind it, because that is the secret ingredient. Before we let you go today, what else would you like to share with our audience? That life is a journey. And so is this film. And I'm hoping that you'll come and that you will find a lot of joy in, in watching the movie. And I, I think that you'll relate to it. And I want people, most of all, to take away the thought that love really can t- transcend everything, any difficulty. When We Last Spoke is also is still available as far as the book side on Amazon yes. major stores. You can definitely go check that out. But also the movie, bookmark this website. That is when we last spoke movie.com. You can learn everything about this movie, learn everything about Marcy Hanna. LA, a little side note, it was filmed in Georgia. There's so many great story pieces within the story itself. Well, I would like to also mention that if they had, they'd like to see the movie trailer, they could go to fathomevents.com and also go to my website has some movie trailers too. So they could go to www.marcyhanna.com. So Marcy Hanna. Dot com. Com. Mm-hmm. Right. First and foremost, I want to say thank you for being on I and Refocus Radio for allowing our audience to understand more about the book and the process that it went through to be turned to a film. And we wish you great success when it comes to October 27th and 29th. That's correct. And thank you so much for having me. It's been a privilege. Once again, you've been listening to I Am Refocus Radio, and I'm going to give you the website just in case you're sitting in the back and you didn't hear me. When We Last Spoke Movie.com. When We Last Spoke Movie.com. You also go to MarcyHenna.com and find out more information about her latest project because she has other books that she has written as well, just in case you've been wondering. And like we say on every single show, keep God first, stay focused, and peace. Thanks for listening to I Am Refocused Radio, brought to you by Documation. Documation is a full-service technology solutions company that provides IT, print, and software-managed services. Headquartered in San Antonio, Documation has been serving customers across Texas for nearly 30 years. Visit Mation.com today.